Hello YouTube. Today we're going to make some 48% aqueous hydrobromic acid. This acid is used in organic synthesis and I plan on using it in future videos, especially for dehydrating alcohols. So for this experiment you're just going to need basically two key ingredients and 400 milliliters of water. The first is potassium bromide which is 240 grams, and the second is sulfuric acid at 180 milliliters. Of course, you're making an acid, so please be very careful, wear proper gear, and try to do this in a fume hood or outside. So on the right, we have our 240 grams of potassium bromide. And then on the left, we have our 400 milliliters of water. We're going to mix these two together and dissolve the potassium bromide. So, we're going to start by setting up, in my case, an overhead mixer. You can use whatever means that you like. Uh, you probably won't have any luck with a magnetic mixer because uh, 240 grams of potassium bromide is a little too much probably for them to move, but uh, you can get it dissolved however you like. I use a little bit of heat just to help uh, speed things up and get it to uh, dissolve a little bit faster. There we go. So this took about 15-20 minutes to fully dissolve. The magic of video will move ahead. So now we're about, I'd say, 10 minutes into it, and now we're pretty much done. So it's all dissolved. We can shut down our mixer and move on to the next stage. So we've got an ice bath with the ice bath with the beaker inside with the overhead mixer once again, and you've got sulfuric acid in a separatory funnel to drip. The sulfuric acid you'll notice is green. It's contaminated. It's a hardware store variety. I didn't want to expend a lot of money on high quality sulfuric acid for this reaction. So we start our mixer up again. Uh, you may still have trouble using a magnetic stir. You won't see that now, but here in a little while you may understand why. But we're going to begin dripwise adding in our sulfuric acid. Please be careful as uh, splashes can be very dangerous. Went a little bit too crazy at first here getting it going and it involves some gas. You want just a very slow drip. It took about four hours to drip all of it in, but then I had a lot of time on my hand that day. So here it is, about a, I'd say about an hour and a half in. You can tell at the bottom that there's a precipitate forming. This precipitate is uh, potassium bisulfate. Uh, as the procedure moves ahead, you're going to get more and more of it. Okay, this is one it looks like when it's done. The uh, contaminants in my sulfuric acid reacted and turned a ugly brown color. So I've got it in an ice bath right now to try to get as much of the potassium bisulfate to come out of solution and crash out. So now we want to move on to filtering it once you feel that everything's out. So set up your vacuum filtration. Uh, you don't have to use a vacuum filtration. You're welcome to gravity filter this. It will obviously take a little bit longer, but uh, I chose to do vacuum. A key point, if you do decide to vacuum filter this, this is the fourth take that I had to do because 
you have to use a very strong filter. The first three takes, uh, the filters I used weren't strong enough, and the acid basically uh, blew a hole right into them, ate a hole right through them. So. I have like three or four stacked in this one. I also didn't turn my vacuum completely on, I did it really slow. Uh, what you're not seeing right now is the bottom of that beaker is full of potassium bisulfate. Uh, there's no need to dump all that into your uh, filter flask here, just decant off the solution. Alright, so I turn on the vacuum and we'll suck out all the rest of the solution. So now we need to set up a, a simple distillation. Take the flask, uh, the filter flask, and you'll want to pour it into a one liter uh, round bottom flask and set up uh, similar to this. Once again, I use a plastic uh, container to save my water. I have a, a little pump in there and a whole bunch of ice. So I'm just showing the general setup. This is just a simple distillation. The uh, when you first start the boil, uh, like right here, water comes over first, and the first distillation there's going to be a lot of water. So I think for the f I think I re or excuse me I think I distilled this for about three hours, and it took about an hour to get all the, an hour and a half actually to get all the water out. Uh, after the water is out you'll see your temperature rise from 100 degrees C up to, it'll start moving up higher. You'll want to start collecting what comes over at about 126 to 127. We're at 127 now, and you'll notice that it changed to a kind of a blood red color. This is the first distillation. Uh, in a second, I'll show you the results of that. However, later, I didn't take video of it, but later on, I distilled it a second time and got about half of what you're seeing right there. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, please ask and talk to you soon.